Hello, and welcome to episode 11 of C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. Once a week, I will pick some topic of interest in C++ and dig into it with some live coding. In this episode, I'm going to point out and clarify a mistake I made in episode 9 that was pointed out by a rather astute observer regarding our usage of STD Future and clarify some of the options that are available to us with it. So when we last left off, we had a function that looked like this, code that looked like this. We are creating a set of sorted random numbers and then getting the size back from them and printing them here. Now, the let's remove this try-catch block. We don't need this. And this throw. And so this generate call is relatively slow. So we'll go ahead and compile this so that we see where we last left off. We need to link in pthread, and we need to set our standard, and we can execute. And this generates two different sets of random numbers, and then tells us the unique numbers that are in each set. So we see that we've generated a million numbers, but we've only gotten approximately 632,000 unique numbers out of the million random which is fine. It's just an interesting uh, experiment that takes some computational time and lets us play with futures and asynchronous operations. Now, in the example that I first gave, I stated that this line we called std async of make sorted random 1 million dot get dot size. And we did this twice. We'll go ahead and paste that there and comment out our other lines. Now we compile. And we'll run this through user bin time again to tell us what our CPU usage was. And it executes, and we see that we're using 99% of the CPU, which means we're using one core, even though we might have expected to be using two cores. Now, when I made that video originally, what I said is the problem is that async can choose whether or not it wants to run something in um, in the background asynchronously or if it runs to run it in a deferred ma manner. And that's technically true with the default arguments. So as we can see here, the default arguments to std async are a async or deferred. And this allows the system to decide for itself whether or not it should launch a thread and perform the operation asynchronously, or whether or not it should store it deferred, or calculate it deferred. So what we're doing here is we're letting it decide, but more to the point, this get member that I am calling, it blocks until the value is available. So I have said asynchronously calculate our list of sorted numbers, and then immediately block until it's available, then return size, then asynchronously calculate another set of sorted numbers, uh, random numbers, then get block until it is ready, then return the size. So I've forced it to block and execute these one at a time. So getting back to the point where we left off in the last video, this std launch async can almost certainly be removed. And we're saying, do the best thing that you know how to do on our computer. And now we compile. And execute. and see that we're still only using one core.
But if we go back to saying that we want it launch async, let's double check here. Now we're seeing that we are using two cores again, getting 181%. So it's important to note that the default behavior is to do async or deferred. And I was, I, I was mistaken to not point out that this get causes a blocking call until it finishes. But as you can see, if we want to force it to run in another thread, then we need to pass the async. But this can have interesting consequences. For Let's see what happens if we create several of them and not to give it any command for async or deferred. And we will add some outputs for them. Oops. All right, so we've got F1, F2, F3, F4, and F5. So theoretically, this will launch up to five threads. Let's see what it does. See if it ends up calculating that any of them in the background without us explicitly asking it to. This virtual machine has two cores assigned to it. And we can see here, it's still not doing any of them. Um, in a separate thread, and that's kind of curious to me. So let's do this. So by calling git here, we're forcing F2, we're forcing this call to block until the value has been completed. And then when we call f2.get again down here, it is um, the, the system will return the same value back to us. It will not recalculate it again. It stores it. So it's running. And no associated state error. Actually, let's double check this. I thought a subsequent call to dot get would we turn the same value twice. So this is in std future and there's the future, and we look at git. Waits until it has a valid result. It effectively calls wait in order to wait for the result. Ah, valid is false after a call to this method. So we cannot call get twice. That's fine. We will do this instead. val one dot size val two dot size and I hope you don't mind that I just made that mistake while I was recording this. This is live coding and we're all learning something. And we're still only using ninety nine percent of the CPU. So it would seem that the runtime that I'm using is um, refusing to, by default, use more than one core 
of the two that I have, perhaps because I only have two. So let's see what happens if we use clang. See if we get any different result. And we did not there. So let's use the um, lib C++ if we can. Now I have to admit I haven't tried to use it yet on this computer. So let's double check std lib. So um, I know that I have code in place in chai script. std lib equals libc. Okay. I forgot to time that. There we go. Interesting. So by using libc++, it doesn't mind that we only have two cores apparently, and it's going ahead and running some of these in a background thread. So we can keep playing with this. And Let's see what we can do. Part of the problem is that std set is doing a bunch of memory allocations and stuff, which is probably why we're not getting great parallelization results. But let's just go ahead and ignore that for the moment. Um, so I wanted to, to point out one other thing before wrapping up this correction here, is the fact that async is the default, uh, async or deferred is the default, and you can force it to run async if you want to. Now, we didn't really spend any time about deferred, and deferred basically means that it will be executed, let's see, is executed on the calling thread the first time the result is requested. So this is lazy evaluation. So let's say Let's get this correct. std launch deferred. Let's say, for the sake of argument, we absolutely knew that we've ended values f1, f2, but we didn't know, depending on some switch that might take place later on in this code, if we would actually be utilizing f3, f4, and f5. So we could do something like this. And now in our example, we are going to get, let's see, let's rearrange this. Hopefully we don't change the results too much. f1.get, f2.get. Now it will, based on what the runtime decides to do, run f1 and f2 in the background and only run F3 if we ever actually call it. So we'll save the computational effort of ever calculating F4 and F5 because we have told it to do lazy evaluation with this deferred. Let's see if we get some parallelization. We still did. Calculated the uh, the top two in threads, it would seem, since we got 149% CPU utilization. And then it calculated the third one deferred because that's how we set it up. So um, I'm not sure exactly what the uh, takeaway here is, but even with the awesomeness that stood async and futures are, you definitely still might have to tweak things to get the best utilization that you want on your particular platform for your particular application. And consider using deferred explicitly for things that you want to set up in advance, but maybe only calculate if they end up being needed in the future.